on tonight's show. I have the crew from the new movie Coronavirus Chronicles, Period Styles, Devin Tatum, and Caleb Flower. And now, for your host, Cool What up, everybody? Welcome back to the Kicking It With Cool Car Show. I am your host, Cool Car. This is episode 130. We got 130, y'all. 130 in the books. I keep bringing you this value, keep bringing you these guests that drop these gems on y'all. I do this for you, and I can't do it without you. So come kick it with your boy. Tonight, I have the crew from the new movie, The Coronavirus Chronicles. It's one and two. So I'm telling you, you don't want to miss this. These brothers are doing something special in the community. They're doing something special in film. They all got their separate things going on as well. They came to together collectively to create something great. I know you're going to love it. Without further ado, man, I'm going to just go ahead and bring these brothers right on in with a nice, cool welcome, like how I like to do it. And we're going to get into whatever they got going on, man. Everything, which is everything. Let's go, y'all. Let's get it. Welcome, my brothers, to the show. Yo, what's going on? Yeah, what's Where up, y'all man? At, man? Where the energy at? <laughs> y'all was live. Y'all was live pre-show. What's Yo. happening? <laughs> <laughs> y'all boys was live, man. But no, listen, man. I really appreciate y'all coming on the show. Glad to have you here. Um, so we we gonna get it going, man. And I I can't wait for everybody to hear about everything you got going on. I know they're going to love it. Um, but hey, listen, I like to start my show with a prayer. So everybody's cool with that. We can get into that yeah, real quick. Definitely. All right, cool. Yeah, Heavenly cool Father, Lord Jesus, we just thank you for just gathering us here tonight. Lord Jesus, to celebrate life, love, creativity, film. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we just thank you for the for the souls that came on this show tonight. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, just sharing their journey and being transparent with everyone. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, and just dropping gems and dropping value. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we just thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you for food. We thank you for the clothes on our back. We just thank you for life, love, happiness, and good health, Lord Jesus. We just give you all the victory, all the glory, all the love, all the praise. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Everybody, introduce yourself. I know I, I gave you names at the top of the show, but everybody needs to know who is who because we got the lower thirds down here. They might not, you know, it might not correlate right with them. Okay. <laughs> so who going from? I'm going first? Yeah, you at the top, man. You might as well jump it off. Oh, what, what, what name? Okay, well, my name is Devon. <laughs> Devon, tell them how y'all doing. I'm the editor of the film. How y'all doing? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Next up. Hey, my name is Caleb Flowers, a.k.a. Caesar Wolf. I am one of the editors, the photographer, videographer, director, photographer on the film. And, yeah, some other things, too. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hold on real quick. Oh, Whoever's playing, the, who's ever playing the audio, can y'all turn it down just a little bit? I can hear that feeding back over here. All right. We you good? All right, we good. Bluetooth on, so good. Know. We good. All right, I just heard it playing back. All right, well, um, all right. <laughs> Furious, you up, man? Yeah, my my, na my name is Furious Styles. Um, I did the screenplay, directed, I'm organized and created everything. Um, as you know, Devon Tatum, brilliant cinematographer and um editor, Caesar Wolf here, Caleb Flowers, brilliant cinematographer and editor also. Um, Jelani Harris, I gotta give him a shout out. Yeah, he definitely. did a lot of music and supervising. Um, Devon's doing a lot of the music and score on part two, and um, July Harris did the soundtrack. Shout out to 71, um, Cap 71 Entertainment, my man Carl Pitts. And the name of the movie, well, both of the movies is called Coronavirus Chronicles 1 and 2, featuring Oath of the Dam. And we have two parts to it, so it's two movies sci fi, fantasy. There's not too many people of color or black people that's doing science fiction and fantasy. Wow, that's dope. Atlanta, Georgia here. 
And why'd you choose that genre? What what made y'all get into that genre? Because it was a scarcity of it or what? Or that's just something you love? Ever since I was a kid and the first time I saw Star Wars and then I watched um, a rerun of Close Encounters of the Third Kind that came on the TV version with Steven Spielberg and it just grew from there. And then just growing up and sci-fi is a big genre. I mean, from zombie to vampire, werewolf, um, alien, even like James Bond is considered sci-fi. Even Fast and Furious is considered sci-fi. Anything doing with science fiction or fantasy. Fantasy more so the, you know, the DC comics and the Marvel. Yeah. And, you know, Harry Potter and stuff like that. So it's a vast field. And both it combined together. That's what we did. And I linked with, with these two dope brothers right there and Jelani and a, a dope cast and crew. And it was powerful. And, that's dope. Um, I'm just blessed, man, to have a lot of brilliant um, actors and a lot of brilliant crew that believed in the vision and what we were doing. Yeah. And we're planning on doing many other great things, man. We did this with a low budget, man. Hey, man, you hey, you work with what you got, but you, made, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you made some great content and that's all that matters because the vision, yeah. the vision is going to make it happen pretty much. You work with what you got. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, you said something. You said Fast and the Furious is considered fiction. I mean, uh, fantasy or science fiction? Not fantasy. Um, mm -hmm. It's considered, I didn't yeah, know it's, until it's considered sci -fi. like the last year or so really? sci fi because, yeah, because the yeah. science is not a technology. But the technology yeah. that's used to, to make the film? Right. Oh. You did think of all okay. those right. doing that. See, so, anything yeah. that's with technology in it is considered science fiction. Right, you know, got you. Okay, okay. The only time they use all the like, green screens and all that stuff. Here. Say what now? I was saying, you're just uh -huh. saying anytime they're using like the green screens and all that type of stuff, all that technology. Oh, yeah, CGI and stuff like that. Uh, oh, yeah. But if it's science, science and technology in it, you know? Then it's science fiction. Wow, I just thought it was action. I mean, I mean, and, and to it's the general public. More like superhero. It, it's uh, like superhero and, um, you know, going into like, fantasy type stuff so sci-fi fantasy mm -hmm. together because fantasy and sci-fi are two different genres but a lot of times they go hand in hand okay got you mm -hmm. now how did you how did you guys link up because i know everybody on here is a ceo of their own company you know and we'll get into that too you guys can kind of you know promote everything that you got going on but how did you guys link up you know because i'm pretty sure everybody's busy doing their own thing yeah. well i met furious so, through an acting class through okay. Nick Conte acting studio. Oh, and that's Nick how Conte. me and him linked up. We've been cool ever since. Yeah, we've been cool ever since. Okay, okay. Yeah, I used to go that's to Nick Conte. Yeah. Mm. What'd you say? And I Caleb, watched Caleb, I met that. Furious. <laughs> He's in my area. <laughs> oh, okay. So I met Furious actually working on so I'm a part time phlebotomist and a part time videographer, um, producer, writer, and all that stuff. Okay. So I met him pretty much on one of my shifts, and, you know, he had. Like saying the vision. Some people say, you know, they're gonna do certain things, and hey, I want to link together, and right. that really comes. But this guy stayed on it. Hey, bro, you, you still doing uh, videos and stuff? At that point, I pretty much kind of wasn't in. I was mostly more into the health field by that time. But he kept asking me about it. Do you want to make this film? Do you want to be a part of it? Then yeah. when I really got started, I started seeing a lot of more group-minded people, same like group-minded people. Yeah. Um, pretty much like. Yeah, we're down to do this too, and I'm like, okay, all right. So it's pretty much a movement going on. Same thing the way he's with, with me when he got me back into this. Same way with the actors and then the other um, cast and other crew. So you know, great minds to light come together and they able to produce something. So that's how. I mean, I met Josh on another set while um, Furious was working on it as well. So and, and just to put it out there, Jelani Harris, I met him through knowing him for years because me and him used to be in a hip hop group together. And okay. he's been decades um, a master audio engineer, a master music producer and stuff. So it was only right that, you know, music and film are hand in hand. You can't have right. film without audio and stuff. Right. So these are just brilliant guys that I met. And I just been blessed, man, to know them. I'm planning on doing a lot of major things with these guys. You know, Devon with the indie cinema. Uh, why not productions over here with Caesar Wolf, 
Jelani Harris with Studio 23 Music Group and me and Vision Entertainment proved that you could have black brothers and sisters because we got some females that are helping us out with, with some things too. Yeah. Um, shout out to Portia Johnson and, and a, a few other people. But we want to prove that we can make things happen and work together because a lot of people feel like that when you're a person of color or black, you guys can't work together. There's a lot of narcissism and arrogance in our field because that's Man. the entertainment field anyway. <laughs> but we try to have a humble attitude and work together as family, you know? Oh. A lot is an understatement, man. It's crazy, bro. I don't. I just, for me, I can't. I just don't understand it. I don't understand what makes a man feel like, you know, either they're better than you or, I, I don't know, man. Don't that's, get, that's that's the end. Let them get a little piece of success. Yeah. And and let them and let them get a little piece of money. They gonna think they better than somebody else. Yeah, man, it's it's a plague, bro. It it really is a plague. They, they try to act like we athletes can It's this. like, yeah, if you have a sports team, you're supposed to work together as a team, right? But I be telling filmmakers, man, if we just form the Avengers or the X Men and work together, we can all have our separate companies. But people yep. don't want to do that because everyone wants to be. Well, I'm the dopest director. Everybody I'm the dopest wants to be on top. The dopest actor, actress, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, everybody wants to stand out. That's what it is. Furious, I met you. I met you um, at eighty nine point three, right? With with Dia, right? That's where I met you at. Yeah, eighty nine point three. You that's... met me from being on a hip hop circuit. Yep. You know, I, I started out really as a battle rapper, and then I went from that to being um, um, in a hip hop rock group and stuff. Okay. And then I went from being a you know and, and you know shot um started this group called EX Vortex, and we did something on Stank on You. That's how far back I go. We got a platinum plaque for that. This okay. stuff with Public Enemy. Opened up shows with Indy Ire. Did a lot of stuff, man. And then um, from that to being a stand-up comic. And yeah, then, I saw you on stage of, doing your thing. <laughs> yeah, that did happen and got into the acting and filmmaking and stuff. And the rest has been history, man. So just all of us got multi-talents, man. I'm blessed to be around a lot of multi-talented people. You yeah, know? you got to stay around like-minded people, man. It just it just sharpens you, you know. And there's nothing you right. can't do, you know what I mean? Because what you don't know, the other man knows. You learn off, it. you know, bouncing ideas, all that, man. Mm -hmm. You know, right. hey, hold on. There's a question I wanted to ask you. Did somebody take your name on that uh, that Lloyd mixtape? It's oh, different oh. furious styles, but they don't spell it the same way I spell my stuff. Okay, okay. It's a rock you know what I'm talking about. Furious Huh? Do you know what I'm talking about, though? They had a skit on yeah, Lloyd. I saw, I saw but it's like different spellings. Okay. But it's only one Fury Styles, though. It's only one me. I got you. <laughs> I got you. It's only, it's only one me. It is, you know what I'm saying? Ain't too many others, man. It's only one hey, me. So did you guys actually film these this movie or these two movies during the pandemic? Is it like in the yeah. heart of the pandemic? Is that when you did that? So how hard was we how hard sure was that to people get people COVID in the same tests, room? We made sure people were were compliant and safe, and it was hard, man. But we were blessed not to have one incident where anyone got got sick or got in the okay. hospital or died. No fatalities. You know how they say no animals were harmed in this film. Yeah, no people were harmed <laughs> during the making of this film, and we made we we we, we made sure that everything was okay, and and then we um. You know, we, we have fun. We have fun doing this. Um, everything didn't go smoothly because when you're an independent filmmaker, that's how it is. But uh, it is, man. People said that we couldn't do a science fiction fantasy film with a low budget, and people told me not to do it. Oh man, cheesy, corny. Yeah, that's it's when you. That's when you're supposed to you do start it. Something, <laughs> you know. Yo. Yeah, that's when you're supposed to do it. When they start telling you you shouldn't do it, that's when you're supposed to do it. Right, yeah, yeah. right, you right. Know what I'm saying. Right. Mm -hmm. Pull it off, and that's how I do it. You know, when they say I can't do it, you and I got it. a lot of haters and stuff because I learned in this life, no matter how good your spirit is, no matter how much integrity, how much honesty and loyalty, you're gonna have haters. Sometimes people are just hate on you, just because other people. Oh, he's a good dude. Yeah, he's not no good dude. <laughs> let me <laughs> you know, tell you something just... though. You let me, let me tell you something, man, because it's crazy. It's so crazy. Like people can call you corny, people can call you weird. 
people can call you whatever they're going to call you and you continue to do what you do and let you get a little bit of success, let you get a little bit of money. Man, you the coolest dude ever. The whole image change. You know what I'm saying? The whole yeah. image changes. Everybody want to be around you. Everybody want a piece. It's it's just sick, man. But, you know. I put it like this. There's billions of people in this world. I don't expect billions of people to love what we do. All we need is that fan base, just a, yeah. a few. A few. That that, that really believe what we're doing. And I feel like we got some powerful stuff and we're going to keep getting better and growing and learning because I want to be a, a, a student of the game. It's just like, you know, I study film and, we, and all of us are so passionate about film. Yeah. And every day I write, every day we're talking and working on film. And yeah, I was the, the weird kid that grew up, that grew up in the hood, um, into aliens, into reading Stephen King, into you know Star Wars and the comic books, Marvel comics, and all that stuff. But you know, at the end of the day, I was able to manifest a lot of stuff that I've been through in life, a lot of stuff yeah. I saw other people go through, and then put it in these films and work with these guys to bring the vision out there. Yeah, that's and, what I was gonna say. When you got life experiences, man, it, it makes for good content, makes for good creation. Yes. Creativity, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I got I got the trailer. I want to show everybody the trailer. Then we're gonna come back, and I want everybody's, you know, I want everybody's perspective on and experience, uh, you know, of filming it and making it, and you know, just talk about their experience doing it. All right, okay. we're gonna go into the trailer real quick, and then we'll get back. Yes, sir. Yes, indeed. I love it, man. I love it. I just, yeah. it, bro, listen, you, you say you didn't have much to work with, it's no budget and all that, but you know what? It's the fact that you did it. It's the fact that you have some content. It's the fact that you have a reel right there to show somebody and say, hey, man, this is my idea. And if somebody comes along and wants to invest and says, okay, well, I saw what you did. I like the concept. I like the plot. Let's put some money into it and take it big. You know what I'm saying? And, but you have that. You have that versus somebody on the sidelines saying, oh, man, that's corny. Oh, that sucks. Oh, that's low budget. But they don't have shit. You know what I'm saying? Well, we have people that have stuff that told us, man, wait until you get this type of equipment. Wait till you did this because you don't want to show this because this is a representation. of." I'm like, you know what? Uh, people need to see the growth. Because exactly. I read articles on F. Gary Gray, on Rod Rodriguez, and Quentin Tarantino, especially like when I was reading articles on different famous filmmakers who, when they were going to film festivals, people would sit there and critique them and say, oh, well, this sucks. You're color grade, you're this. Do you go to actor school? You don't. 
Do you go to a film school? You don't. Well, you need to. You need to go back. And then years later, these people are like millionaires, billionaires. And they're yep. like, well, how about these people need to criticize you? Where are they at? They're exactly. like, I don't know. Because people told me, no, man, wait for this. and Wait for this. Wait for that. And every time people tell me that I can't do something or something can't work, I do it. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. my whole thing is, I, I I don't believe in can't. I don't believe in can't do. I believe yeah, I can sure. make anything happen. Just yeah. like when you was praying earlier, I believe that, you know, I got God in me. I got a, a, a strong power in me. I'm a warrior. I've been through a lot of stuff in life, man. Yeah. And I've, I've had some really messed up experiences that happened and made it through. Man, it's all and about- I was just thinking and said, man, you know what? One of these days when we're on top and things are happening stuff i'm gonna remember this so when the next brother sister whoever come along and they're like well i don't have the equipment when i don't have this i don't have that no you can make it happen because look what i did yeah look what we did it's it's all about it's all about having that mindset of how can i not i can't you know so many people are so quick to just be like man i ain't got it i ain't got the money i don't you know what i'm saying it's i can't i can't it's like no how can I? And that just gets your mind thinking on a whole different plane, man. Shifts your paradigm, and it and it, it it manifests it really. It put that energy out there for you to start critically thinking and problem solving, as opposed to just hitting that dead end and that stop sign and being like, I can't. And then you move on to the next thought. You know what I mean? And that's all it really takes. You know, use your resources, think outside the box, creative thinking, creative financing. Have you got to do it? And things can come true, you know what I'm saying? Just like that. But I want you brothers to talk about themselves, man. I want you to. Yeah, I want. I want. I was gonna. I was about to. I was about to switch that. I want Caleb to give us a little insight on, you know, his company, and then I want him to also give us an, ex, you know, talk about his experience filming, you know, the Chronicles and the the other film. Okay, so why not productions? I pretty much found that in 2014. I pretty much. Um, really went into my passion with videography and photography. So pretty much on the side when I'm not working at, um, at uh, LabCorp, I'm pretty much working out there in the field, shooting um, events, um, portraits, anything of that stands events. I'm doing the videography work for that. Um, so when the opportunity came for to shoot this film, you know, I already had most of the equipment. Like I had cameras, I had lights, not the best lights, not the best camera. But I knew we could at least get it to where we can get and garner some type of attention or at least put a project together where it's like you're saying somebody can look into and say, hey, I want to, you know, see what y'all guys can do if I put this um, budget behind. That was pretty much the whole vision behind it. At first, I ain't gonna lie, we're doing the pandemic. So I was like, man, nobody ain't finna come through and do this, man. <laughs> I was like, man, the first day of the set, we literally had maybe 20. 30 people show up when we had to kind of rotate everybody's scenes and try to get people in and get them out. How many to 30 people? Yes. Yes. Had to keep it spaced out. We had to keep it spaced out. Everybody. That was all who was in the film. Yeah. But they they weren't all together. You know, we had to space it out. People was masked up. They got their um, well, you know, of course had the COVID shots and everything, vaccines and everything. But just seeing that come together and the people come there and like, no, we want to work. We still want to work. You know, we're in Atlanta. I'm sorry to put it like that, but people's in the club, you be the only one mask and everybody's in their party. So I'm like, okay, so they're really yep. gonna die at the party. I'm <laughs> gonna live to die to go ahead and film this film. Let's go ahead and get it rocking. Let's go ahead and do it. <laughs> right. Whoever's going to come. And if we do get sick at the end of the day, thank God nobody really got sick. You know, you had a few, um, you know, people did catch COVID stuff, but they didn't have any type of, you know, they got over it. Thank God we crossed our fingers, but hey, we got through with the rest of the film. But it was just a great journey just to see how people just come together, like like many, I mean, like minded people, and yeah. just be able to put this film. Like he had people that are um, astral musicians, you know, astral people, actors who really want to like progress their career. People who want to learn more about the song, you know, cinematography and filming, was actually on the set asking questions and everything. So it was a beautiful experience. And I look back at those pictures of the behind the scenes. I kept taking pictures and I'm like, man, this thing is really going. It's like you actually seen the wheel of the car. You're trying to push this car to go, it just broke down. And yeah. it's actually rolling. You get in and I'm like, man, this thing is really taking off. So when we had the premiere, 
it took a while for us to still get the editing and stuff done because we had to, you know, come out of our pocket. Yeah. You know, not working too much with a budget, only working with what you got, and you're still working in uh, a full time job. It sometimes it's like, man, to get this project, I don't want to work on it no more. Then you got to come back to it and realize the people who really came out, and you know, nobody's getting paid for this. It come out really because they believe in the vision and yeah. work of it. So when I sit back and was looking at the, um, you know, of course, you critique yourself on certain things, but I wanted to see the actors, the people, and the crew who actually put their time, you know. Time is, you know, that's one thing you can't get back. So somebody give you eight hours, maybe four hours yeah. on the set. Yeah, man, you gotta give, you know, you know, you gotta give it to them. Come out because you can be using that mm-hmm. time for anything else. But yep. they believe in this vision so much, just the same way as I believe in this brother. They came out and was able to get it rolling. You know, so we're trying to get on to the next step. So that's that's my whole experience with it. And and a couple people that got COVID. What was crazy is when they was on set with us, they didn't get COVID. The minute they got offset, and it was a couple that you know went out party, did some things, mm-hmm. and they caught COVID, and I was like, "Wow!" So it was like the realization is it's still out there. Yeah, but we were just blessed it didn't happen y'all to had any your, of us. Yeah, y'all had and your no, own little bubble. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, y'all yeah. had your own little bubble. That's cool. Yeah. So Devin, what what's your experience? And, and, and tell us about your company and everything you got going on. So my experience, I came in after everything was shot. I did, um, well, me and Michelle, we did a reshoot of one scene. and um, It was a great experience. The talent was great. The experience was, was great. You know, the, the experience was great. Um, only thing that gave me hell was acting. Uh, not not acting, um, editing. That was the only thing that gave me hell. The editing, gave, that gave me hell. If it wasn't me losing the files and I had to re-edit what I already edited. Oh. It was it was always something. It was always something. Even a couple of days ago, I thought I was gonna have to re-edit a certain piece, you know, but I found the file. So I'm like, thank you, God. So, <laughs> so that you can't go wrong. Will so that's been wrong. hell, right? So so it's been hey oh yeah. So and then like my computer it decided he wanted to um um tell me no. And I'm like, oh, you're not editing the day. Like, oh, I guess I'm not editing the day. Well, shit. All right, let me go watch TV. <laughs> so it, it it was the editing of it, but it's it's coming out good. I'm I'm happy they like it. Um, for me, um, see indie cinema, um, DDBD three, um, film company. Um, just got a script done. Um, just got a script done a couple of days ago. It's in review for um, rewrites and everything of that nature. Casting is about to go up after this whole event is is um, completed, so all that's gonna be be going. Uh, so so yeah. So that's oh, animal photographer. Yeah, animal photographer. Yeah, photographer. Um, I'm an actor as well. I'm an actor, artist. Yeah, I saw you. I saw some pictures of you with um with Dejour's Mafia thing. Dejour's the homie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Dejo. Oh yeah, yeah, he's real cool. He's real cool. Ray, yep. Yeah, yeah, that's the homeboy, man. I, I want to say this with with Devon, he did more than just a few reshoots. He did the intro to all I the mean, chapters of part one except for one, and he did um like I he's doing all the editing for part two, and a lot of music and score and stuff like that. Okay. So he did a lot more, and um. We're all going to be working on something coming up pretty soon. Hopefully in August, we're doing these five minute um, shorts. One's going to be called the tidbit teasers, which is going to be like science fiction and fantasy. And then Caleb is working on the rom-com experience, which are romantic comedies. And they're going to be one day shoots, um, five minute shorts that we're going to put out there to, to the world. And Devon's going to be helping us out with stuff. We're going to be doing stuff with indie cinema, why not production? Films, entertainment, and um, Studio Twenty Three Music Group. Um, be looking out for my man Champion and stuff. This with my man Jelani Harris, a uh, reggae artist. Okay. Um, he's doing some stuff with him, with him, um, and he has a lot of great music and a brilliant um, audio engineer and brilliant musical supervisor. So you're gonna be hearing a lot of stuff from us in the future, individually as well as together. Okay. So be on the lookout for us. 
Dope, dope. What are you guys um looking? Are you gonna put this film into film festivals? Are you trying to get it onto like streaming platforms? Streaming platforms. We're looking at streaming platforms, and like I said, we go when this is when, while we're pushing this out, we're gonna be um filming uh like I said the five minute short coming up pretty soon, which we're gonna have like a two three week turnaround and put it out there to the public just to show where the skills are at, you know. Okay. And uh. So we're doing a combination of both having these two long form films and then doing a couple shorts here and there and stuff, showing them a different variety of things. Um, these guys are both not only great cinematographers and editors, they're brilliant photographers, like Devon was talking about. Um, so any models out there, any um, wedding people out there and whatever, check Business these guys. So if you need some videography done, some photography done, you know, look them up on Instagram. Um, I'm I'm willing to work with you know writing teams and stuff and direct the stuff. You know, we cost money, but um, <laughs> we're willing to work with whoever and stuff you know out there. And any actor or actress that's really serious about their craft, hit us up. And we're looking for diversity. It doesn't matter black, just white. Serious about their craft. So what now? Wait, not just serious, but willing to learn. Not just here, but willing to learn. Yeah. Right. You don't want to know it all. You don't want to know it all on set. Don't, don't right. come on set and be right. like, oh, I know how to act. I've been acting for 15 years. I don't give a damn. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. that person over here been acting for three months that look better than you. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Like, and and, and I, like, I, I, like we talk about cool card, there's a lot of narcissism out here when we talk about what well, this person say. well, I'm, I'm a better director. I'm a better writer. And I'll be telling people, man, it's not uh, uh, Olympics. We're not, we're not trying to, I'm not trying to compete with nobody. What I'm trying to compete with is trying to have the next stuff that could get put out there to Disney or Marvel or right. um, the, the, the next, like Avatar, the next Alien and Predator, the next Jordan Peele type stuff, you know, or, or whatever. That's what I'm looking at. I'm not trying to compete with nobody here on this scene or anything. I'm just trying to make great entertaining films that people 20, 30 years from now will be like, you know what, because of that, this influenced me to do this or do yeah. great things or even made me, like I told you what Star Wars did to me and Close Encounters did to me and Stephen King, made me want to get into the, the field and do things. Spike Lee, John Singleton, you know, people like that, you know? I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you talk about people who are saying that they're better and they're this to that. Well, if a person is seasoned and they know that they know a little bit more than you or whatever it may be, why don't they say, hey, man, I see this. I, I I respect what you're doing, but I see this. You might be doing this wrong or this could be better. And then give you some tips, give you some point and show you the way. But it's, it's not that most times. You know what I'm saying? It's just constructive like, criticism. What's right. constructive That's criticism? Cool card. Exactly. Construct is in there. Construct, construction, building. Yeah, build you, you destroy, up. You build. Build you but up. But if you're going to criticize, help build. Exactly. But a lot of people don't do that nowadays. A lot of people are like, well, just get on my level. Think like me. Be like me. <laughs> yep. Help to me. Me, 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 me. But at the end of the day, we have to learn how to work together. And I feel like when, once we all start learning how to work together, it makes it better. But my, my thing is, like, I don't have no hatred or no animosity towards anyone. I love everybody and those that want to work together. And that goes out to other filmmakers that's watching this. If you want to get up and work together, let's let's work together. Yeah. If you don't want to work together, no. it's cool. It's no animosity. Hey, you said something. Build, right? And, 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 and everybody's talking about me, 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 me. Look at me. Look how I did this, but don't want to show. So that's the main reason I started this show, to bring people on mm. myself who are doing it, who have a journey, who have a testimony, who've had pitfalls and, and some triumphs and successes, and they can transparently talk about it so that people who don't know what they need to know can come on here and get some nuggets, get some gems, get some value. So with that said, I want each of you guys to kind of give the viewers a, a little, you know, dive into your life and how you learned how to operate cameras, how you learned how to write screenplay. You know what I'm saying? Like, just give them a little something on how you taught yourself. If, if self-taught, took a class, let them know. Cause some people just don't even know where to start, man. Right. 
YouTube. <laughs> for YouTube Academy, that's one. That, yeah. But, uh, yeah, first okay, so for acting, um, for acting, get with an acting coach, but don't get stuck with an acting coach. But get with an acting coach, learn all you can. Don't be afraid to learn. Don't be afraid to mess up. There are some acting coaches out there that'll be hard on you. And then they will they will sound rude, but they won't be rude. But you gotta when when you wanna come in and be an actor, you gotta leave who you are at that door and and come in as an empty shell and soak all that stuff up. Like soak it up. Cause and then and then learn as much as you can. And as a filmmaker, it's the same thing. Like you wanna learn as much as you can and then not just learn it. No, don't just sit there and learn. Go out and do it. You know, like pick up even if it's just your phone, because now today it's your phones now. Yeah. So but but me personally, I'd rather go get a DSLR camera and, and and go shoot. You know, learn and then not only just a filmmaker, learn editing, learn music, learn writing, learn all this stuff. Be a quadruple, be a whole basket. So when somebody say, Oh, I need this, I don't wanna be like, Oh, well let me go get no, I'm like, okay, I can do that. Yeah. Oh, I need I can do that. Now are you then, are you self taught? Time, are you self taught? I'm self taught. Okay. I'm That's what people need to hear. They need to hear and, that you yeah. so you taught yourself. That's what people need to hear. Oh, you're but so they know self, it's possible. Um, you don't need to go pay somebody thousands of dollars to teach you this stuff. Oh you yeah. Can go. And you learn as you Listen, go. I'm self taught by YouTube. Only YouTube. thing that I semi learned was um script writing. I went to um, college for digital media design and that's where I learned some of my camera stuff okay. and some of the writing. But after I graduated, when I got really more cinematic, uh, shout out to the George cause he kind of pushed me more into it to really open up and do it. After that, self taught everything. I'm talking about like aspect ratio, um, how to walk with a camera, you know, cause you got to roll your feet with a camera. Um, yeah. Another thing too, for actors, Tactical training, um, um, get some type of medical training. Know the medical terms because when you watch TV, what are the things you're going to see? You're going to see tactical, like policemen, and you're going to see yep. a lot of like firefighters. You're going to see, case point, go look up Dick Wolf. Enough said. Go look up Dick Wolf. Go learn that. And then um, if, you, if you don't know who Dick Wolf is, he's the one that, he does a lot of cop shows. He does um, uh, medical stuff. Like just learn those type of things, and that'll give you a, a edge in in your um, acting career. Okay, cool. All right, Caleb. Will say the thing for, well, I can't say I half and half self taught, half and half people kind of taught me. I grew up in a church, um, Maranatha Seventh Day Adventist Church, and they had a media program there. Oh where um pretty much captured the services using the camera that's how i learned how to do you know wide shots you know how to do close-ups how to pan how to tilt and i was just thinking about this other day that was back when i was 10 years old but those same tools that i got back then still able to use them now and i knew that i could use that but i never really thought that i would be in that career because i always want to go to school for architecture so i did go to southern poly and then i dropped out from there and went to georgia state back in 2012 2013, I went to Georgia State because I knew I had a passion for film and video. Okay. And from there, I graduated 2016 and in film and video. And I've you know, been doing videography, photography, and film since then. It's really is a passion. Even before I even got to Georgia State, I would take my phone and take pictures of anything that you know pretty much caught my attention. It could be yeah. you know, graphic, nature, or um, somebody just walking by. And at the time, People are blessed nowadays because you can take your phone, you can get into this craft so easily. Man. And like yeah. Josh was saying, you edit. You can learn how to edit just on your phone. Now, you know, with TikTok, they showing you the basics of how really much to edit. All you have to do is go to Windows Maker, get the little more basics, and then Adobe Premiere. You can look on YouTube and learn how to do a lot of that stuff. That's why I'm saying YouTube really, if I didn't learn it in the school, because most of my stuff came from outside of doing gigs and stuff, that's why I had like you know, actually on training because now you work with somebody money, they want to have stuff right. <laughs> right. So you just go to YouTube, look it on, 
search, see what you can find out. You know, there's a hundred videos in there. You know, you have to narrow it down to what you really want to look for, or you're just gonna be on there all night. But that's really where my blessing really much came from is just searching, just being intrigued about learning how to learn more about the equipment that you have. And that's I guess that's the best place to start. I like what you said though, because you were saying you started in a church with a with a program. Yeah. And yes, people probably wouldn't even think to look there to look there, you know? Check with your church, yeah. check with your local church to see if they have some type cool. of your program, some type of production program because they put on shows, they put on events, you know what I'm saying? And if, if you if you're working with a shoestring budget and you really want to have a hands-on experience with an instructor, but you just don't have the money, there you go. Look to the churches. Go to church. Go to church. People need to get back I, in I church. Did camera work at church. <laughs> People need to get God back in their life anyway. That's what's wrong with us now, man. That's why it's going crazy. Yeah. Ain't nobody believing in God no more, man. They don't put God first. God is not in the equation. I think it's a fad. I think it's it's the cool thing right now to thank God, but they don't even have a relationship with the man. Hmm. Everybody's thanking yeah. God. They don't know God. You could tell. What? Well, well, that's because, and, and, and that's the thing with me, I don't diss nobody. You know, like, um, I believe in, in one God. You have many different religions and different belief systems, but I respect people's culture and belief systems. I've learned from growing up and just growing up in a community where you had all different type of people from Muslims to Christians to black, white, Hispanic, and you just see all these cultures who all worship God and all believe in a higher power mm -hmm. and feel like in this day and age and you know, recently, just a few years back, the country, and it's still kind of divided. You know, you see what's happening in Buffalo, New York. Hey, you see what's happening right. in Texas. We just had a situation a few years ago where it was a whole country divided against each other and people making jokes about religion, people making jokes about belief systems. Hold on, let me cut you off real quick, though. But I ain't talking religion. I'm talking spirituality. I don't care about religion. But, but that's the point I'm trying to make. They they try. It's a lot of people out here that try to use, like we was talking about narcissism. Religion is divisive, man. Yeah, they try to use religion or try to use belief system. Yeah. Well, I believe this. I'm better than you. Yeah. I believe in that. I'm better than you. I believe in this, and and I feel that's wrong also because when you're spiritual, that's a whole different level. A whole different you, level, man. Because if we were, oh, we have more spiritual people, and I'm not talking about goody two shoes people. Because all of us make mistakes, right. and all of us perfect and flawed. But if all of us lived by some type of code or principles, it wouldn't be a lot of craziness going on. Wouldn't be a Buffalo, New York. Wouldn't be yeah. a, a the Texas incident right. that happened. You gotta be some kind of evil to kill young kids. You gotta be some kind of evil right. to go into a church and right. kill a bunch of black people that's praying. People are, there's, a, there's no foundation. There's no root, man. People blowing in the wind out here and making their own decisions. <laughs> it's what it is. Yeah. It, you know what I mean? It's, it, yeah, whatever. Anyway. And that's why I'm hoping through film and music that we can, you know, entertain people, but also raise awareness, raise people's spirits. Entertain, you know, be able educate. To do and stuff. Yeah. You know? Entertain, educate. And, and, and yes, have a good time being have a good here's the thing though have a good time being educated because a lot of people don't right. want to be lectured to but if they can have a good yeah. time and get a little right. knowledge you know what i'm saying then right. it, it works it's a good formula what carries one said edutainment <laughs> there you go there you go all right real quick i want a self-analysis from everybody on here on one thing that you feel that you could be doing better or more of or less of to take yourself to that next step down the path where you're going? Well, um, I'm gonna let one of y'all go first. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna take a step well, back. I, well, like quick. I was gonna say real quick, cause everyone was talking about how they started. I'm gonna just say real quick and get into what you were saying. Um, YouTube is also a good way to learn schooling. Every director or writer should take up classes. I don't care if you're trying to be an actor or not. Take up acting classes so you'll know how to deal with actors. Take up writing classes and stuff so you'll know how to interact with a writer. You know, um, 
if you want if you want to improve and i know with me trying to improve i'm continually taking up classes i still got an acting coach i still have writing classes that i take up i don't care if you have to do stuff online i don't have the money like these brothers were talking about go to youtube go to barnes and nobles the use section they got books they're used that might just have a little page tour or whatever this like 60 70 percent less than you know the book that you would normally get at a bookstore it's no excuse in this day and age the digital age yeah whatever you want to learn you can google it and learn and stuff always improve your craft a basketball player football player doesn't train once a week they train every single day sometimes multiple hours a day if yep. you want to be a director writer actor or or whatever cinematographer photographer whatever you want to be at you have to work on your craft, a, a music supervisor, uh, uh, special effects, whatever, sound effects. Work on your craft every day. And when you work on your craft every day, you're going to get better. You're going to get better and you're going to grow from that. There's no way that you're going to not grow if you're serious about what you do. One little last point. It was a guy who was, I think he was a violin player or whatever. He was like 90 some years old and his students saw that he practices every freaking day. And one of the students said, why are you still practicing? I mean, you could do this in your sleep. He said, at 90 some years old, he said, I'm still practicing because maybe one day I'll be good. Wow. Mm. Wow. That's the level I want to be on and still be consistent at it. Yeah, that's deep right there. More people should think like that for real. Because everybody, it's <laughs> a lot of people out here that just think they're a master and they really haven't accomplished nothing, man. Haven't done anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. And then they want to go sell a master class for $5,000. <laughs> <laughs> and the first two hours is they buy you. Oh, right. Born and right. And then, <laughs> and, then leave, and then leave you hanging at the end. Like, oh, you got to buy the other class to get what I sold you in the first. Right. Like, what the hell? And that's two more thousand dollars. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> we'll give you half off for the second class. That's two thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, self analysis. What 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 do you feel like you could be doing more of or better or less of or to get yourself to that next level? Well, I guess I'll start. <laughs> So I guess mine, I'm more of an introvert. I'm naturally an introverted person. That's why I like, you know, me too. Film most of the stuff, edit. Give me the, the footage and I edit it down and, you know, go by our separate ways. But I will have to work more on communication. I know my big brother kicks on me a lot about that all the time. You know, I can call myself like Caleb Flowers is more of the business person. Caesar Wolf is more like the creative. I got to find a thin line between those two, you know, okay. characters there, you know, be able to people face a little bit more and talk, you know. I'm not scared to talk, but I'm more, you know, introverted. You got to know your both sometimes. Introverted, man, hey, look, you want know, to talk to them, I'll get a little bit of hearing down and everything, talk. But, yeah, that's definitely one of my stuff now, so I know for sure uh, communication just being, you know, a little bit more outspoken. So Okay. Mm -hmm. Devin? Okay, so reset the question so I can make sure I answer it right. <laughs> What's one what's the one thing that you that you probably could be doing more of or less of to uh you know get you to that, that next level? What could you be doing better? Uh, let me see, I could be doing more of filming, like creating. Let me say that I could do more of creating. Um, do less of procrastination. Let, let, hold on, see see a lot of y'all out there, y'all be procrastinate. Artists, we procrastinate. Stop it. <laughs> Like when you get that first thought, do it. Do it. Do yeah. it. And what was that third one? What was that third one? Yeah, you be covered. More of, less of. Oh, yeah. I did it covered. Yeah, you covered. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Let me drop a nugget to these actors. Listen, what? I don't care where you work at. That is now your tool. I don't care if you're a cashier. That is now a tool. I don't care right. if, oh. if you flipping burgers. That is a tool. Yep. I don't care if you walking dogs. That is a tool. Why? Because you're doing something that nobody has done. You're, you're constantly talking to different personalities every single day. So now that you become an actor, guess what? If you, if you met an in-quote Karen, 
you can use that character as yourself. Yep. Or or if you met a business person, you're like, wow, this person right here, you can you can incorporate that business person in you. So don't think like, oh man, I don't really got no material. Yes, you do. Look at your life. You can pull off of anything you've done in your life. I can say that because I done worked at a restaurant. I pull off of them. Uh, old relationships pull off of them. Mm-hmm. So that's a little bit. Exactly it's fine right off of the Vada's fan. It's fine off of that. He's right. Any, anything in life. When people say I have a brain fart or whatever, I can't think of. I, how can you write every day? I can't. Because when I'm writing, I don't care you if you have to jump on a bus or the train and take a um, three by five notebook with you at your job, like he was saying, um, riding around in your car and stuff. You got to pull over the side of the road and write something. It's always starts coming. So when you have days where you do have what you call a little brain freeze and stuff, you go back to that three by, by five notebook and keep it in your back pocket. Women, you can keep it in your purses or you keep it in your car or have one in every room, even your bathroom and stuff, and just write constantly. Go back to that three by five notebook and look at the ideas you wrote down. And on the days where you have a little fuzzy brain, write that stuff down and, and structure and formate stuff. And, and also to expound on that, the stuff that I know all of us need to do less of is listen to the haters. Like we were talking about nothing wrong with constructive criticism, but if a person is not trying to construct with you, build with you, then take a lot of times, even when your haters will say stuff that might be truthful and it might hurt. Oh man, I need to work on this. I need to do this. That might be true. But at the end of the day, you have to take what is good, what is bad, and not take everything so personal in the heart because at the end of the day you have to make things happen you have to go forward with things and you can't listen to every single person because if you listen to every single person like you were saying cool card you accomplish nothing not a god dang thing that's why you said they i, I said sleep on that f day <laughs> <He> said, hey <laughs> who are they <laughs> f day you was like mother. <laughs> 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 For real, they never but care they, about they. But let they be your motivators. Right. Don't hate on them. Love they because oh, they is what's gonna keep you pushing. You want to like I would hear about people like Tom Brady and them try to every time they play they have a chip on the show. They try to find bullet to board material. Yeah. I want people to not like things I do. I don't want people to love everything because the people that do hate. Like they say, let your haters be your motivators or even let sure. your critics, because all critics are haters. It's some people that really do love what you do. Yeah. They just don't know how to help you or maybe they don't want to help you because they're too involved in, in their stuff. Yeah, exactly. So everybody's not a hater to criticize you. But at the end of the day, be able to take that energy, even if it's negative, positive, whatever, and just absorb that and just bring it out and grow from that elevate because when you're elevated can't nobody reach you up there your haters can't reach you up there if you're elevated if you're low then that's where everything all the hate and stuff stands yeah, yeah you know? of course yeah you're an easy target then all right yeah. self-analysis for you self-analysis self-analysis yeah, self you know it is as far as like trying to become better yeah, you yeah. talking what about you, something else? What is one thing you feel you could be doing better? Pick oh, out something. one thing I could be doing better. Yeah, I could I could be a better writer, a better director, a better actor. No, 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 no. It's too broad. What's one thing right now that you feel that you could be doing better, not being a better, because you're gonna get there. What do you feel that you're lacking that you're not doing that you you pro then you know in your mind I probably should be doing more of that and it'll get me further. What what's that one thing? Honestly, listening to my gut feeling more. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. That's deep. That's deep. <laughs> trusting in my gut feeling more. Trusting in, in myself more because you can let things around you 
um, make you doubt yourself. Absolutely. And Absolutely. I, that might sound vulnerable, but that's real. Like everybody gets to a point in their life. I don't care who you are, where they doubt themselves. Yeah, for sure. That's and when you got to stop looking around more because a lot of times we've been taught that, oh, if you believe in yourself more, that's a form of arrogance or that's a form of narcissism and stuff. Oh, you're just supposed to be humble. And, and yet humble and confidence are two, well, arrogance and confidence, two different things. It's nothing wrong with holding your head up high and being confident and yeah. being proud of what you're doing. And, and a lot of times society has taught us, well, don't be too proud because that's not being humble. Right. And that's not the truth. It's like we should be confident because in this business, if you're not confident, like someone told me a long time ago, you don't have to be a wolf, but you damn sure damn near got to be a rock wall. Yeah, for sure. You don't got to be a wolf, but you might have to be a rock wall because sheep ain't going to make it in here. <laughs> sheep ain't <laughs> not going to make it. <laughs> sheep ain't going to make it, boy. <laughs> You might as well just fall over. Because <laughs> it ain't going to happen. A rock wilder can at least put up a fight with a wolf. You're right. A sheep ain't going to stand a chance. <laughs> you ain't doing it, man. But nah, yeah. So I would say this. When you start feeling that way, stop looking around you. A lot of times it's yeah. because you're looking around you seeing what everybody else is doing, comparing yourself. And even though you, you'll say you don't, but we do. We do. We'll see other people you know, and how far they're going and, and what they got going. And then you start feeling less of yourself like, man, I got to be doing more. I got to be doing more. Man, F that. You're right where you're supposed to be. As long as you're taking steps to try to get to where you're going, you're right where you're supposed to be. Just keep learning, mm -hmm. keep growing, and keep doing. That's it. Mm -hmm. And and whose race are you running? That's the thing, bro. We we Man, I'm telling you, especially with social media and all this shit that everybody's doing out here. We all look around right. us and be like, man, I got to hurry up. No, you don't. Run your race. It's a marathon. Yeah, yeah. run your race, man. Yeah. God got you, you period. Your race if you want to. God got you, period. And you know what? Some days you need to take off. You're not falling behind. You need rest. You need a mental break. Physically, you might need a break. You know what I'm saying? Right. You need to go right. out and live a normal life and get those normal experiences. So you can come back to the creative table and put that on paper, put that on film. When that tank runs dry, you got to refill it. It's okay right. to take a couple of days off and not feel guilty, but we do. I know I be. I know I had to get over that as a creative. I'm like, damn, I feel guilty. I, ain't, I I'm not doing nothing. Man, listen, bro. We gotta stop looking around. Who cares what that dude is doing? Who cares what that dude is doing? Who cares how far along his career he... You know what I'm saying? Who cares? You're going to get to where you're going. Just keep going. And run your race. And, and, and enjoy the experience. Because a lot of times, we're looking right past everything we're going through. You're not even, you're not even appreciating the little small accomplishments along the way. Even the little struggles along the way. You're not even appreciating. You don't even see it. If somebody were to tell you to recollect on uh, experience last week and you're just focused on the end, end result and not enjoying the journey, not enjoying the grind, not really taking it in and, and learning from it, you can't even tell them what the hell happened last week because you don't even know it. You didn't experience You didn't really experience it. You went through it, but you didn't experience it. Hey, Kukar, when Muhammad Ali said he was the greatest of all time, a lot of times he used to have self-doubt, but he used to have to remind himself, I'm the greatest. I told these guys that I'm going to be one of the greatest sci-fi fantasy writers and director. I'm going to be among the greats. And I told them we're going to be among one of the you know, greatest film companies and stuff working together to take it to the next level. And I really believe that. It's not just lip service, but that's something I have to remind myself mm -hmm. and I tell them to remind themselves to always build your confidence up and believe that I can be the greatest. I can be yeah. the best. You don't yeah. have to knock down other filmmakers, knock down other film companies, but you have to believe that you're the greatest to be great, to make great things, to do great things. And it's yeah. nothing wrong in feeling that you can become great. Because if you're not trying to be great, 
then what is the purpose of anything you're doing in life? Anybody that's doing anything in life want to be great at it, not just, oh, I'm okay. Yeah. You know? And a lot of times we forget, we really forget. Like you, you, you got to step outside yourself and, and look at yourself and be like, listen, man, we really forget that you can do whatever the hell that next man is doing. And he could be a billionaire. Yeah. But you, you're both humans. And when it's like, if you got into a room and you, and you talk to this guy and you broke him down and found out what his insecurities, what his fears are, where he lacks in confidence, bro, that man is no different. You will see him in no different. No, you will not see him in a different light. You won't period. Because why? Because he's just a man and everything that he learned. If you took the time to, to weed out all the distractions, don't procrastinate, focus. You can learn exactly what he learned and be a billionaire just like him. But a lot of us don't do it because we're distracted or we lack confidence or we got a fear. That's it, man. That's it. We forget that Elon Musk, you could be him. You might got, you know what I'm saying? If you started earlier and even if you start now, but if you started earlier and you took his path, you could be him. It's just man. It's just a man. But we forget that. And then we get down. We get depressed. Oh, I'm not moving fast enough. I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. I, I, nah, man. Damn all that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? True. Facts. It's real, man. But we forget it, though. Facts. We we really... we we Listen. We'll say, oh, I'm not going to host anybody up on a pedestal. But we do. Because we'll look up to him and be like, oh, man. He's doing it. Dang, nah, damn all that. You give him his praise and you respect what he's done and his accomplishments, but he's no better. He's no smarter than you. Right. If you go and get in the books and learn or get on this YouTube and learn or get with somebody that's going to give you a hand up and teach you, they're no better. There's no, They're no better than you, bro. Right now they may be, but in the end, in the end result, they're no better than you if you took the time to do what they took the time out to do. But we forget I, that. I tell me one time, Never dumb yourself down for the next person. Hell no. Never. Be who mm -hmm. you are, and mm -hmm. if a person don't understand, then let them catch up. Yes, indeed. You know, let them catch up. Yes, you know, indeed. At the end of the day, you have to be who you are. You have to find what, what works for you. Yeah. You know, we, we all have different approaches of doing things, but it's good because when I look at Caleb, when I look at Jelani, when I look at Devon, I look at people within our, our crew. And even, I learned from even some of the actors and stuff, we all have different ways of looking at things, but we all grow from each other. Yeah. And, and you have to understand that every day is a learning experience. You have to be open to that learning experience. You have to be humble to that learning experience. And you have to every day just grow. And everything around you is an experience. And grow from Absolutely. that. Just take time to spell the roses. Like you said, you could be running so fast, you don't even take time. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Yeah. While yeah. other people are sprinting, you could be taking your time so you can get everything together and grow from there. And like you said, not looking at the next person. Oh, I want to be this. I want to be. Yeah, we all want to be on a certain level at some point. But be able to enjoy the journey. And I'm not afraid. A lot of people are afraid to show people their journey. Mm -hmm. they're like oh well don't show people this don't show people that you want people to see you right here and at the end of the day no Instagram yeah it's like acting <laughs> is being able to be vulnerable Instagram, writing is being able to be vulnerable the best characters on TV and movies are people that are relatable Yeah, those are the best characters yep. the ones that can cry the ones that can show emotion the ones that can show hurt or pain or love or joy Yep. That's because that's real. When that's when you're real. with your child that. and you're showing love, that's real. I don't care how hard of a dude you are. When you're around your daughter, or around your son, or whatever, it brings out the kid in you too. It brings out the yep. sensitivity in you too. It doesn't make you a punk or a sickle font or nothing like that because you love your woman, because you love, you know, your man, you love your kid, you love your your friend. You know, it's hard for us as brothers to say. We love one another because we equate love to sex all the time. So we tell our brother, hey, man, I love you. Oh, no homo. 
No, nah, why you gotta say that at the end of that? No, it's not wrong with loving your brother or loving your sister yeah. or loving your, your yeah. fellow person. You know, it's nothing wrong with that. Because at the end of the day, that's the only thing that's gonna get us here uh, ahead in life. With all this violence and craziness going around us, if people have more love and respect in their heart, it'd be less craziness happening in our world. I wanna less. say this too. I wanna say this too, and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it at this. In y'all journeys, and this goes for me too, and I've learned this along the way, never suppress your confidence when you meet your idols, right? Mm. Or just anybody in the business who's quote unquote made it, right? Don't mm. suppress your confidence because this is the thing. I don't worship anybody. So when I meet somebody, it's just a regular person to me and I'm going to treat them as such and I'm going to talk to them yeah. like that. But a lot of times, the people who l love the light and they love the fame, that bothers them. So they're going to treat you a certain way and they're going to block you because you're not hosting them up. You're not kissing their ass like everybody else, like the whole crowd around them is doing. And when you just treat them with love, respect, and as a normal man, and, and you're not even focused on the object of that person, but just the person... That makes them feel uncomfortable because they're not used to that. You know what I'm saying? So don't suppress your confidence in who you are and how you treat just a normal person because somebody that may be able to help you in your path and, and that's in your field treats you a certain way because you treated them normal. It happens all the time, bro. That's why I don't even really network. I let it come to me. I stay over here in my lane. I know I need people. I'm not saying I don't. But I don't really network like that because I can't do the force networking shit. I just can't do it. I won't do it. You know, it has to be. Well, well, that was my problem too. I used to try to force, oh, I want to work with this person, work with that person. And I start realizing yeah. the people that are going to work with you or the people that's going to be there with you, people that's going to rock with you, go rock with you. They're going to rock with you, man. They're going to rock with you. People that don't rock with you, no matter what you do, they're not going to rock with you. They're not for you. Yeah, you know, don't lose no sleep. Don't feel no type of way. Don't be like, oh, yeah, I got that's I, it I, is. A circle. No, you don't. Let that circle come to you because the tables turn anyway. Yeah. Those circles spin, and then as them damn circles spin, it's like a goddamn Ferris wheel. People getting out of that circle. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes <laughs> the circle moving too fast, or sometimes the circle is just toxic. Sometimes the circle is, you know what I'm saying? It's unstable. People get out of the circle. Let the circle come to you, man. Right. Seasons change, them circles change, these tables turn. Bro, I let it come to me. Make sure that circle is a, is progressive because you don't want to be a hamster in the wheel and just exactly. be going around and around. Man. Exactly. <laughs> man. Exactly. That's why I don't worry about people always talking about circles. I don't, I don't worry about circles, man. I just let it come to me. I'm going to be me. Right. And if you're right. feeling my energy, because I work off energy anyway, I feel your energy as soon as you walk in the room. Right. I can tell you how you feel yeah. before you even know. Devon said that earlier. Yeah. Energy, and Caleb will tell you this. I'd rather work with an actor that or a crew member that is talented but has great energy than a person that's so brilliant. Yeah. But they're a jerk. For sure. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, energy is very important. For sure. If like energy or energies don't match with yours, it's not gonna work. Yeah. If it doesn't work in business, it doesn't work in relationships, and they sure don't work in, in um filming or none of that stuff. Nah. And, and energy is important because what you project from here, from your heart and spirit, and from this right here is going to come out on screen and stuff. And if you don't have good energy, it's not going to be good. Absolutely. Good. Absolutely. Hey, one more time. I want everybody to leave their tags. IG, I know it's on the screen anyway, but tell everybody where they can find you. I'll have everything in the description as well. Tell them when the movie's coming out. Tell them when you're premiering it. I know you got everything coming up. Drop all that, mm -hmm. and we're going to get up out of here. Okay. Right. Who's going first? Uh, oh, so my IG is Caesar Wolf, a.k.a. Kago. I know it's a long name. <laughs> W-O-L-F-E, a.k.a. K-A-G-O. Um, other um, business uh, IG is Why Not Produce, Y-N-O-T-P-R-O-D-U-C-E. And, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. Devon? 
Uh, mine is D D B D and the number three. And you can hit me up there for filmmaking, cinematography, uh, photography, editing. Uh, so yeah, uh, if you need a scissor reel, if you need a demo reel, pick your boy up. There it is. And mine's is Fury Styles. That's P H U R I O U S underscore Styles S T Y L E Z. And um, just hit me up if you guys want to build. If you want to, you know, I'm, I'm into building pyramids because they last long. You know, that's what I want to do. I want to build some pyramids. And if you're a filmmaker out there, if you're an actor, actress, model, it doesn't matter, um, writer, um, cinematographer, editor, come build with us. Come build with us. Let's, let's form the Avengers and the X-Men and stuff. You know, let's make this happen. And Cool Court, I'd like to thank you, man, for having us on your program, man, and doing your thing, man. You continue to build too, brother. And y'all, y'all come out and support this brother too, man, because we got to support more of our brothers and sisters and more of our people, especially doing yes. things on an independent level. We got to, you know, support each other. Yes, sir. And I, from the bottom, of my heart, bottom of our heart, we thank you. Shout out to Studio yes, 23 yes. Music Group, Jelani Harris, too, and everybody's Woke Vision Films Entertainment. Uh, Why Not Productions, Indie Cinema, and everybody that's in our crew and, and cast. Coronavirus Chronicles 1 and 2 featuring Otha Dam. I'm going to make an announcement pretty soon. We're going to be streaming pretty soon sometime soon. And we're right. going to have a budget film coming out pretty soon. And we're going to be contacting everyone for that. The Tidbit Teasers coming out pretty soon. We'll be filming that in August. Um, the Rom-Com Experience, we're going to be filming that before the end of the year. And you're going to hear a lot about us coming up in the future, you know? Okay. Shout out to my man, Champion. Shout out to um, Portia Johnson. Um, man, shout, shout out to all those. There's, there's too many people to name this stuff, but shout out to all of them. They know who they are. That's been down with us from day one. And um, continue to rock with us because we're going to continue to rock with you. Yes, indeed. There it is. All summed up. And anything that else, that, you know, when it, when it does start streaming, you got links, whatever, send them to me. I'll update the description on the YouTube channel. You know what I'm saying? So everybody can find Support you. independent films, too, here in Atlanta. All these independent filmmakers, Man. support them. Support yes, independent film. Yes, sir. Okay? Support. Get out there. Show that love, man. To independent filmmakers? Huh? Okay. Can I give a side note? Like a little nugget for independent filmmakers? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so, okay, filmmakers, independent filmmakers, listen, come here, listen. When y'all filming, I need y'all to not worry about the quality of what y'all doing. If you went to go see the Avengers and you got a Canon T6i, you're not going to get that. You're not going to get the Avengers quality. <laughs> Work with the quality that you got. Yeah. But this is how you will stand out. Learn the movements of the cinematic. Like, don't just keep your camera still. Like, look at look at these movies when they're doing their dialogues. They're always moving. No matter how subtle they are, they're always moving. Learn those movements, and I promise you, your 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 quality in that in itself is going to elevate than some of these other ones. Just a little nut. Learn yeah, yeah. And don't be afraid to film. I don't care if you got an iPhone or Android or whatever. If you don't got the equipment or whatever, if you got audio recording, I don't care what it is, film. Just film, just write, you just do act, belief. just do it. Stop hey. procrastinating, just do it. Just do it. That's it. Just do it. Period. Yeah. Just do it. Take the step. Go outside and film a tree. Doing, <laughs> doing is a thousand times better than just thinking it. Just do it. And there it is, y'all. Hey, y'all, I want to thank y'all for coming on tonight. Really appreciate y'all. You know what I'm saying? It's been a blessing. Y'all were very transparent. Share that knowledge, gave the value for the viewers, man. We appreciate you, definitely. Hey, y'all, every Tuesday night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you know where I'm at, just kicking it. You never know who I might have, so y'all make sure y'all check in, y'all subscribe, share it with anybody who you think that can get some value from the channel. I got 130 episodes, so I know somebody is dropping something somebody. for you, you all right? I do it for you, can't do it without you. We out of here. Peace and love. Yes, sir. Let's go.